Of all the locations to build in Fallout 4, Coastal Cottage has to be one of the most difficult. From the rocky cliffs, to the steep slopes, to the ruined building that just can't be scrapped, and of course the hole in the ground. So when a viewer of the channel asked me to build here, I knew I was going to be in for a tough challenge. Well, I packed this scrappy no mods build, full of lots of cool features, from robots to radio stations. But did I live up to the challenge? Join me for a quick tour, and let's find out. Hello everyone and a massive welcome or welcome back to Fallout Play Build Collect. First of all let's start with a massive thank you to viewer of the channel Blue Kitten who came up with this challenge for me. So a massive thank you to Blue Kitten, this video simply wouldn't have existed without her support. So let's start off on this slope, very early on I decided I wanted to do something really scrappy here, something that looks like it already existed in the game. And when you're building on a really steep slope like this it's very difficult to build a large building it's much better to build a number of smaller buildings. Part of my headcanon law for this place is that it serves as both a fishing village and as a rest station for those that are traveling along the road. This is something of a public convenience and you can see here I have a magazine rack and somewhere where you could wet your sponge or your rag, shall we say. <laughs> I don't think this is something I really want to dwell on, but I do think these kind of details really can add something to a build. I've made sure all of these buildings can be accessed from both the front and the back and I've tried to make it seem like the settlers were using as much of the space as possible. The vision I had for this building is this is where the settlers are growing their uh, medicinal plants. Having the plants come up from the floor there and having the open roof I really like the way this one worked out. I think this is actually the first time I really thought about where the settlers get their chems from and their medicines. I think this kind of medicinal plant growth is something I'm going to have to consider more in builds in the future. Next up I have a more traditional kind of greenhouse building. See here there's an area on the side where they could store water and on the right side where they could keep their farming tools. And as we move to the back we can see them working really hard on what is a nice little collection of crops here including some moot fruit plants up on the hillside. Again trying to use as much space as possible. Let's head back down the hill and we'll take a look at the buildings on the left side. And we'll start at the bottom with what is a police shack. I managed to get a guard post in here with some working spotlights and I placed the door on the back here so the guard can get out and investigate or patrol the exterior of the settlement if they need to as well. This is the first of what I describe as loosely cobbled together chalets. The idea here being is that the settlement would rent these out to perhaps travellers, traders or maybe even hunters and fishermen who move with the seasons. As these are for rent they're very very basic and of course there's no personal effects in them and it was nice to finally find a place to use that for rent sign. All three of these buildings use unique pieces. Really like the way I put these auxiliary beds up above the main bed. Again trying to make the most of the space. Perhaps a trader could have his caravan guard sleep above. Or this could be temporary accommodation for a whole family. Next we head around the corner to this defensive position. Plenty of storage here for weapons and ammo. And of course we have weapons and armor workbenches. And these two guard posts have a really nice view of the hillside. This is one of the few areas of the settlement I decided to fence off and as we head towards the workshop you can see there's a scavenging station and some fishing paraphernalia. Decided to use this building as the room where they'd cook and prepare the chems and their various medicinal plants. On a slight technical note I was quite pleased with the fact I managed to get a floor that goes all the way round and through and I love that red rocket robot poster. So we turn around to the left here we can see a walkway that leads around the back of this building but more on that one later. And for now let's head up into the trade area. And if you see my other builds you know I very rarely have anything sitting around on shelves. I think they'd lock everything away in, in containers and cupboards. I think in the fallout world everything of value would be locked away. But that's just my personal preference for how I think settlements would work in this world. Of course there's also the practical implication of it's very difficult to do junk without mods. And of course it doesn't use up space in your settlement and helps the game to run smoother. There's one of my robot provisioners. Anybody who's seen my other builds on this playthrough know that this particular playthrough has all robot provisioners. I don't do that on all playthroughs but this guy was specifically quite a heavy robot builder. Now we come to what to do about the big hole in the middle of the settlement. And as you can see I've turned this into a secret bunker with warning signs and flashing lights. And inside you can see that this is actually a secret Minutemen armory. In addition to the normal weapons and ammo boxes we have these crates with the unassembled mini nuke parts. My headcanon here is that the Minutemen found them and really just didn't know what to do with them. 
but I knew they were valuable and stored them away here. Again, if you've seen any of my other builds, you know I love adding these role play type elements in. The original idea for this building is it was gonna be a shower block. Of course, no showers in the base game, sadly. So I repurposed it for food and perishable storage, which makes a lot of sense since we're coming to the bar area now. Really simple eating area, this one. And I've stuck to the fishing theme with some baskets of fish on the side there. All these bridges and walkways just snapped into place. Took a little bit of patience, but no glitches were needed. They all snapped in naturally. The real difficulty was getting all the heights to line up. And then I had to use the rubber mats to cover over some of the rougher areas. Overall, this section is the most difficult part of the settlement, in my opinion. Not only have you got the broken house and the hole, you've got all these rocks and trees and undulating terrain. It's a real pain to build here, but I'm quite pleased with what I've managed. The lower proportion of the building on the left is a simple shack that I had here for a very long time. It stayed like that for years until I came back and expanded it and added this concrete building. This was actually the second thing built here. Once again, I've kept the theme of the fishing paraphernalia. and I've added these simple crops on both sides. And on this nice little flat piece of hillside, you can see I've added this camping area with a fire and just some chairs there for the settlers. This area looks really good at night, as does most of the settlement. Stay tuned later on. We have a night tour coming up, of course. This is a pretty simple living area, and I really like the fact that the barn and the greenhouse pieces allow you to build these half pieces of wall inside the buildings. The reason I have this big ramp leading up to the shed on top here is that this originally housed my robot production bench. As the settlement grew, I needed more power, so I converted this into a power workshop. Again, I love the flexibility these barn and greenhouse pieces give you. They're just great for making these worn, lived-in looking builds. Having this guard post in here over on the right, I think it just looks really odd and scrappy, and I just love the way it works here. I'm definitely going to be doing this again in the future. And practically in-universe, that guard post has a fantastic view of the surrounding area. And when it comes to building in amongst these trees, I use the same technique here with these metal wire floors as I did at Red Rocket with the fuel hoses. If you haven't seen my Red Rocket build, I'll leave a link to it here. These floors just snapped in fine, nothing special was needed other than having a lot of patience. Another one of my robots here, he was the lone resident here for a very long time. This place occasionally gets attacked by a death claw from over on the left there and this robot makes short work of him. Even though this is no mods build, it does use all the DLC pieces and some bits from Creation Club. So if you see anything in the build and you want to know where it's from, just leave me a message, I'll be happy to let you know. This is a Minutemen control room. They're also broadcasting radio freedom from here and putting together their radios to disperse throughout the Commonwealth. Plus hidden and away in the corner here, we have a secret security station. Having almost been completely wiped out, I figured the Minutemen will be putting a lot more effort into Intel this time. Some reasonably comfortable quarters for the base commander. Then we can head out of the bunker and through a hole in the wall of this barn into what is our medical room. It's very, very rough and rustic, but that's the whole idea here. The Minutemen haven't been back here long. They're just coming back and setting everything back up again. Someone on one of my previous videos commented that my settlements weren't scrappy enough. My answer to that was it depends on the location and it depends on the type of settlement. So my settlements represent newer builds and some of them like this one are meant to have been around for quite some time. The upper level of this concrete bunker has windows all the way around so it can be used for defence. This bridge and balcony area gives us access to the stairs that lead to the roof and you can see on the right here, I really like the way I've managed to do this barn roof with the power coming out of the side there. You may be a long way from the capital wasteland but I couldn't resist fitting in these GNR signs. Spent quite a bit of time working on the lighting in this area and this roof really does look fantastic from a distance at night. Lightning was really important in this one and it really helps this settlement stand out. There's not much in this area, it's one of the more sparse areas of the map and obviously being up on the cliffside as well really helps this settlement stand out from a distance. The original plan was to add an observational post to this area, but even with a couple of resets I was starting to run into some problems with the size of the settlement. If you don't know how to reset the size bar, I'll leave a link to a video here where I go into full explanation of that and the possible problems of it. The next problem with this settlement is this hillside area here. This is one of the reasons why I didn't wall all around the settlement. Anybody on this hill would simply be able to come straight over the wall or fire over it. I played around with a few different solutions for this and in the end I decided on this wooden walkway area with these turrets on the top. Anybody coming over that hill now has got a very nasty surprise. It's extremely difficult to get these floors and this ladder in around the back here. Very, very tight spaces and it took a lot of experimentation. Not exactly how I wanted it, but sometimes you do have to make some compromises. 
Speaking of compromises, it doesn't seem to matter what I do. I seem to end up with a Brahman on a roof somewhere. I've been watching some Starfield videos this week and it seems Bethesda still haven't fixed this pathing issue. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Fallout 5 comes along in 10 years time and we still get a Brahman on a roof somewhere. But that's not why you're called. So let's get back to the settlement and we take a look at this at night and you can see what I was saying about how nicely this lights up on the cliffside. As always, I really like to know what you guys think of this settlement. What were your experiences building here? What problems did you have? What did you have to overcome? What kind of settlement did you build here? Was it a military base, some kind of village like I've tried? I know when I posted the preview pictures that a lot of you said you found this one very difficult. So I'd really like to know what you guys thought of this. Also want to know from you guys, where should I build next? Is there any particular settlement you want to see me build? And see what my kind of take is on any place that you're having trouble with? Whether you're just curious to see what I'd come up with, or if it's a location you really want to build at, and you're just struggling for some inspiration, let me know the sort of areas you want me to go next. And as I said earlier, once again, massive thank you to Blue Kitten. She directly sponsored this video, a very generous donation. If there's anyone else out there who feels they can help me make more content, please stay tuned. All the details will be coming up in a second. These videos do take an absolutely massive amount of time and effort and money to make. Anything you can do to help the channel, it doesn't have to be financial. Watching videos, commenting on videos, leaving likes, subscribing, all those little things make a massive difference. Please know that even the smallest amount of help is massively appreciated. So as I take a well-earned rest and sit by the fireside here, let's take a look at all those people who are currently helping support the channel. Whether it's just a one-off or a regular contribution, you can help the channel now over on Patreon and buy me a coffee. The links are in the description and every penny goes to making new content. Now if you're still watching, you'll definitely like some of my other content. Here's my suggestions of what to watch next. Don't forget to smash the like button before you go and I hope to see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.